glory to God hallelujah all right this morning I bring you God's word part three of activating the ministry of angels let's pray father in the name of Jesus we declare this morning that the entrance of your word will bring light we declare today that ignorance will fall off we'll see ourselves as we are in you the higher of understanding will be enlightened in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we are prayed amen and amen all right let's go there's um verse 14 of hebrews chapter number one that has been our bible reading it says are they not all ministering spirit sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation by ministering spirit we understand that it's referring to angels angels earlier he told us in verse 7 that's how to read and study your bible context um, verse 7 he says and of the angels he says who makes his angels spirit do you get who makes his messenger spirit angel spirit and his ministers his servers <laughs> hallelujah are flame of fire so verse 14 now tells us that they are all ministering serving spirit from verse 7 sent forth to serve those who will inherit salvation i will do a short recap on part one and two very short it won't be enough for you to understand what i taught there but just to make a reference to build on today as we feast on god's word <laughs> hallelujah so verse 14 says they are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who inherit salvation now those who inherit salvation are actually all men all right all men why did i say that the bible says tells us that it is god's desire and will that all men be saved the author of hebrew didn't say to us that um to minister to those who have inherited no uh-huh he said those who will so it's a future tense those who will inherit salvation that's all men so he tells you clearly that angels are actually sent to serve all men I like to use the word minister for serve to replace the word serve with minister because that's what it means actually because when you hear minister many times the, the average christian thinks you're talking about spiritual it has to be spiritual to, to minister to minister all right it has to be spiritual teaching gospel no 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 the word minister is serve is serve actually so they were sent to serve those serve when you are serve the next thing that comes to your mind is the server or or the waiter in the restaurant praise god so they were sent to minister to serve those who will be heirs of salvation. The Bible tells us about Jesus in the book of Luke chapter number 4, Matthew chapter number 4, after the temptation. The Bible said there, right there, that angels came to minister, to serve him, to minister to him. You should understand what the administration was to him. Because earlier in that verse, the Bible tells us that he was hungry and that was the only need he had. So if that was the only need he had, and um, angels came to serve him, obviously they, make, they came to give him food praise god so they came to give him food we have accounts of what angels have done throughout scriptures so much so much of them we understand we're going to go over them um, a list of them today but we understand that they rain down manna uh, for the children of israel that was the activity of angels praise god the believer and his angels are in the same territory all right we all said all men have angels but all men are not in the same territory with their angels because the believers has come to zion hebrews tells us we have come say i am come to man zion we have come to zion and we have come to the innumerable company of angels the innumerable company of angels they are the angels of god so the believer and his angels are in the same territory hallelujah the same territory so it's not here and his angels are there no spiritually they're in the same territory dominion of the believer does not exclude creative spirit and angels are created spirit last week we saw the man has dominion over all things god created including spirit created spirit are you following me so angels are included because they are spirit praise god can you imagine that you have dominion over angels so you can king over them hallelujah the bible calls these angels angels that excel in strength it means that angels can do things fast and um, better their efficiency is higher than human that's what it means. They're excelling strength. They're excelling strength. So it means that when you engage the ministry of angels, you get results. You get results faster, and you get better results. 
angels can do virtually almost virtually all things that men can do almost all not all almost all and they can do that faster and better so we on this series so that you know how to engage your angels hallelujah you know how to activate the ministry of angels you could have your angels and live like a weekly it's the same way you could have your bodyguard and you'll be beaten up you could have your angels and they are just jobless i told you last week many of you you've made your angels jobless they are there but they are not doing nothing hallelujah they might be so jobless that they have to start working for someone else someone else that's that's a joke hallelujah all right as a young believer i i i always knew i i'd known about angels we sang about angels and um, a lot of songs a lot of songs uh, angels worship and bow down and um i'm going to sing with angels in heaven and um so the best picture i had about angels were that they were good singers I even remember my children department teacher told me about Lucifer. He said Lucifer could sing seven parts, Jesus. And all I knew in church was just five parts or four parts actually, four basic parts. Like, uh, hey, hey, so there are seven parts. What is the, the fifth one? Um, tetra soprano? Or, or, I don't know, I didn't know. But angels could just, Lucifer was an angel, he could sing seven parts. So when he sings at the throne of God, oh my Jesus, then God's head will swear. Does God have head? Sorry. I don't understand. I was just asking questions. <laughs> so oh, that's all I knew about angels. Angels would worship God. They would they they worship day and night. Every day. And the people have always thought that when we get to heaven, we said we will sing the song of the Lamb and worship the Lamb day and night. So they thought that the only thing we'll be singing. One day I asked my teacher a question, I said, So when we get to heaven, we'll be singing day and night. Like 24 hours, morning to evening, we'll be singing, we won't stop. He said, Yes, we won't eat. My teacher said, um, She was not sure, but we'll sing there at night. So we won't go to the toilet. Ah, uh-huh. he said, Why do you want to go to the toilet? But we'll sing there at night. Won't we be tired singing? Ah, uh-huh. praise God. I don't, I won't, I don't want to tell you if angels get tired, not today. <laughs> Right now, I'm bringing out questions in your heart, right? We're going to answer them. So we thought we're going to sing day and night. And so the, build, the picture of heaven for me was just angels who will sing day and night. So um, that's beautiful. So I, I was just excited. So uh, when I began to study scriptures, I found out that uh, angels, though they serve God, Though they worship God, which is true in scripture, there is some more about their activity. Actually, some people said, I've heard someone say, um, there was a time of the Bible, there was a time before the Bible, when the activity of angels and the supernatural was seen. Those times happened so that they can write this in the Bible. Then there was a time of the Bible, and those days are gone. So the ministry of angels has actually ended. The prophecy has ended. Tongues has ended. Supernatural. I just laugh. Ignorance on display. Follow me carefully. Yes, angels were made to serve God. All right. Some men saw them in the Bible days. And the Bible was written, given to us as syllabus. So that we can learn those things and leave them. So we have to learn the Bible and leave what was done. The Bible is not a storybook. No, it's not a storybook to fantasize about. It should be studied, learned, and lived. Hallelujah. So don't wait until Jesus returns before you see angels. Or before you encounter angels, even if you won't see them. Actually, my first supernatural encounter was with the Lord, Jesus, at about the age of 11. And if that was my first, if that was my first and supernatural encounter, what then angels, seeing angels should not be a big deal. I believe that is less. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Now follow me today. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 1, 48 
Psalm 148, verse 2. Glory to Jesus. Psalm 148, verse 2 and 5. See what it says. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. All right. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. So it means angels actually praise God. They worship him. But one day, my spiritual father asked me a question that changed my perspective. He asked me, Son, do you know, or did you know, angels were made for man? That question hit me like, um, like, boom, like angels made for man. That was so far. If you're going to tell me something was made for man, you tell me leaves were made for man, plant, animals were made for man, but angels were made for man. If angels are made for man, why have I not eaten one? Animals were made for me. I eat animals. I eat fish. I eat, I eat cow. I cook with vegetables, leaves, plant. Angels were made for man. I don't see the activity. Ah, were they made for me? And I was asking as an adult, a pastor. That was when he asked me that question. I was a pastor. Adult. I had a pastor in churches at that time. Well, boom. I was like, okay. Then he kept quiet and like, angels made for man. But I was like, yes, but, but angels worship God. They worship God in heaven. They are the throne of God, worshiping God, bowing down, all of that. So how can they be made for man and they be worshiping God in heaven while I'm here? If they were made for man, they should be in my room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then he went on to tell me, he said, God is self-existent, son. God is self-existent. It means that when someone is self-existent, it means that he doesn't need anybody to be himself. He does not need angels. Hallelujah. He does not need angels. In Colossians chapter number one, go there. Colossians chapter number one from verse five. Follow me carefully. So from verse 15, rather. From verse 15. Are you writing the Bible verses? He is the image of the invisible God. Talking about Jesus, the Son, the firstborn of all creation. Did you get that? In our says to you, for he, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible whether there be thrones whether thrones or dominion or principalities or powers all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things consist now we understand from scriptures that the creation of the world was through the sun and the sun is God. The sun is just a revealed dimension of God in the flesh. Are you following me? So in God, God now as a title of deity, in God, the supreme God, all things consist. Whether it be dominion, authority, thrones, and whatever it is. All things, including man, including angels. If you take away God, nothing exists anymore. That's the beauty of creation. If you have ever thought, of, thought about one day God will die, and he will be buried and they will do funeral for him. I don't know if you have thought like that. I did as a kid. <laughs> Praise God. I did as a kid. If that ever happened by any mystery, which is impossible, it means that creation will cease to exist. Because all things consist in him. He is the order of all things. Angels came out of him. You came out of him. Though you are from the dust, you were from the dust. You are created molded from the dust. But the essence of your living came out from him, came from him. All things, including angels. So if angels came out of him, how would he need angels? Praise God. He does not live in angels. He chose to live in man. So, Angels exist because of God. They find their existence or the meaning of their existence in their assignment, in the assignment God gave him. So God created them and said, I haven't created you. This is your job. To serve my boy. It's like you employ, let me give an example. You employ a bodyguard. 
after employing him, tell him about his salary scale. You know, I said, this is the child you would protect. Or this is the child you would save. It's as simple as that. So in the real sense, why did I employ that man? Or that bodyguard? Or that bouncer? I did because of my son. Because of my child. The same with angels. God created them. But their primary purpose is actually to save man. But preacher man, the Bible says they worship God on his, on his throne. They bow down at the throne of God, worshiping God and saying all of that. Hallelujah. Let me explain this further. Now listen to me. The throne of God is also called the right hand of God. When you hear about the throne of God, throne of God in the Bible, it's not talking about the kind of throne you see in a king's palace, or the king of Benin or the king of Lagos palace. No. Where you see one big chair and them all over. I know people have painted it like that in, um, in movies and in pictures. You get it. But the, the, the throne of God, because heaven being a spiritual environment, the throne of God actually means the right hand of God. It means that because it's the king, when the king wants to give orders and want to give um, commands, he goes to his throne, he sits there, maybe holds his staff and decree whatever he wants to decree, put things into law by doing that. So when we hear the throne of God in scripture, it's also what we call the right hand of God. It actually describes a position of rulership, of authority. The position of highest rulership and authority. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 1, verse um, 13. Hebrews, chapter number 1. I don't want to recite. I just want you to read from the screen too. Hebrews, chapter number 1, from verse 13. It says here, But to which of his angels, as he said, right, sit at my right hand. That right hand is actually the throne of God. In, um, uh, when we talk about God's throne, there is no left hand or right hand. Like in Yoruba, we say, Otun at UOC. Uh -huh. Otun is a position, OC is a position. No, 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 no. It's not the same here. So the right hand of God is actually his throne. He now says, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. He tells you, On a throne, there is always a footstool. When a king sits on his throne, there's a footstool. Now he's telling you, Sit on my right hand. Then he now included footstool in the same text. So he's telling the right hand, describe his throne. Did you get that? I believe you did. Praise God. So it describes his throne. So the throne of God is actually the right hand of God. Now, this position was created from man from the beginning of creation. But the man that was made from dust never ascended to it. In that it fell and he didn't eat of the tree of life. But the Lord from heaven, as the, as the book of Corinthians tells us, the Lord from heaven ascended to that position of authority and rulership. So Philippians tells you that he has been given a name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, whether it be on earth, whether in heaven, under the earth, that is the highest level of authority. That describes the throne of God. So, on the throne of God, the visible image you see on the throne of God is who? Now listen, go to the book of Revelation. Let's read it. We're going to read Revelation chapter number 1, chapter number 5 rather. Verse 1, verse 6 to 7. We'll jump to verse 13, verse 11 and verse 13. Revelation chapter number 1, verse 5. We'll jump to 6 to 7, then we'll jump to 11 and 13. Listen, listen to this. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written. All right? A book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. All right. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the and in the midst of the hell that stood a lamb as it had been slain. Glory to God. Remember John is he pointed at Jesus when he saw Jesus. He said, Look at the Son of God. Look at the lamp of God. Which takes away the sin of the world. Who was he talking about? Jesus. All right. He says to you, um, and stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirit of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Okay. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many nations, of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands hallelujah glory to God and every creature which is in heaven creature in heaven now you know every creature which is in heaven and on earth 
and on the earth and under the earth such as in the sea and all that are in them and I say blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever so who is on the throne the lamb you know that's the description of the name of Jesus that he doesn't want to lose because it talks about a sacrifice for sin and his triumph over the devil and sin so the image on the throne is the lamb who is the lamb Jesus who is Jesus a man sorry God become man I was not wrong I just needed to explain that so when you say angels worship on the throne the image you see on the throne is the image of a man praise God why did I explain all that I needed to begin to sink on your inside that you, I needed to begin to sink on your inside I needed you I, I needed to begin to see the role of man in the scheme of things the role of man the psalmist said what is this man that you are so mindful of him hallelujah the person angel worship in heaven is man is the firstborn of a race called the new creation the race man was sent the race angels were created to serve is called Adam it's a race that was instituted in Genesis Adam is the name of a race not just the name of a person so how blessed is this race called the Adamic race how blessed is this race called the grace of the new creation so when you begin to understand that the role of the angels is actually that in all the roles of angels man is actually in the center it will help you to start putting things in perspective and to receive their activity let's look at some things there's a long list of the things angels do a long list we saw them cook food in the Bible and they gave man food we saw them kill angels killed and they executed judgment we saw them shut the mouths of lions they did that for, for Daniel sorry I mean Daniels in the Bible um, they shut the mouth of lions we see them they fight physical and spiritual battles hallelujah what else did they do they they showed men visions and they told men things to come they bring news from God to man they reveal things as they were given to men did you know that the chariot of fire of Elijah the chariot of fire Elijah rode was actually the activity of angels <laughs> angels can help you travel long distances in a short while I've experienced that hallelujah glory to Jesus okay so going further in understanding how to engage the ministry of angels now listen to me carefully you don't need to see angels you don't need to see angels before you enjoy their activity as you as you don't need to see internet before you get your phone connected or before you enjoy the internet service all you need to do you just need to believe there is internet in this room or in this space and know how to connect to it and get connected or subscribe to it the same way all you need is just to have enough faith in the word of god about angels about the ministry of angels and learn how to engage them it's true angels fight spiritual battles but they fight physical ones too and you don't have to see them for them to fight your battle praise god now listen let me say this in passing when you talk about angels i know some people are just comfortable with singing about angels and praying that they protect them that is fine i'm not trying to take you beyond um, your, the borders of your heart you can stay there but some people believe that angels they can actually talk with them and have meetings with them some believe 
um, they can actually send angels on Heron and they will receive feedbacks. Some believe they can actually receive message from the Lord through angels. Whichever, whichever, whatever level you want to stay, it's fine. Stay there. Stay at the level you desire and receive the best of God at that level. But my meeting today is for those that want something more. Hallelujah. It's for those that want to take it higher. But let's, let's, we'll always have those that are just comfortable with, uh, you know, amongst us. So let's talk about how do you just get that done. All right. To engage the ministry of angels, you just need to believe they exist. I mean, believe. I'm not talking about mental assent. I'm not talking about just having an opinion. You need to really believe they exist. And then uh, you need to believe they were given to serve you. I've tried to establish that in part one, part two, and now part three. Now, the next thing you do is you involve them in your prayers. You involve them in your prayers. It's Father that released the ministry of angels when you speak because Jesus told us that I could pray my Father to release a legion. So you get the picture? Your prayer is directed to the Father, but you issued the command. Did you get that? In the name of Jesus. So a simple example is this. Um, you, you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the ministry of angels concerning my journey today. I decree that they protect me in all I do. They protect my going out and my coming in. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that with faith and you pray that and you confess that reoccurrently um, re over and over again, you have activated the ministry of angels. It's as simple as that. You will be protected. It's as simple as that. But um, there is more. There is more. Where angels um, do things for you, where they get things done, where you send it to specific people, where, you, where they deliver you in specific ways. You tell them, now take me from here, land me in my room. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. There is more. And that's the journey I want to take you in. I hope you don't mind. All right. So follow me. Now, to engage the ministry of angels properly, um, there are a few things that are important that you need to take care of. Number one is what I call your consciousness. Your consciousness. What is your consciousness? Your consciousness is your individual awareness. Of thoughts of your thought of memories of feelings of sensation and of your environment that's a lot right but it's actually they are all connected it's actually um, from your thought thoughts will create memories memories will create feelings feelings will create sensation and sensation will create an um, an atmospheric environment are you following me? It doesn't exclude physical environment too. But when I say physical environment, I don't mean the look of your room or your studio. Or, no, I'm talking about the energy, the feeling in that environment. So that's your consciousness. So when we talk about what's your consciousness, is your consciousness Christ? Or your consciousness is lack? Is your consciousness abundance? Or your consciousness is prosperity? This is what we are talking about. I'm saying what's your thought realm? What memories have been created? What feelings do you feel about lack, about money? What all about angels? What sensation has been created on your inside? And what do you end up feeling in your environment? That's consciousness. Your consciousness is very, very important. It's in scriptures. You may not have seen it, but I'll show you. Now, understand this, that many times your thoughts change. Your thoughts change by... It, it, it things like your thoughts change by itself, like you don't have control by it. That's what it seems, and that's what you have been programmed to think, and what is what you have been programmed to experience. But it's not true. You can actually create your thought. You can choose your, your thought. You can impede thought. You can um, curtail thought. And you can uh, grant thought access. That's true. You can stop thought. Because that is where um, handling your consciousness, that is where it starts from. That's where it starts from. So, your thought changes a lot. And when your thought changes quickly or anyhow, it affects your memory. It feeds your memory. Because anytime you have a memory, your memory is, uh, there are collections of uh, events that you have thought about or that happened to you. And it is the things you think about that happens. Then those things that happen and the things you thought about, they come together to create your memories. Are you following me? All right. This ends up affecting your feeling. Let's see a Bible example. In the book of Genesis, there's a young man I like so much. He's an old man now, though. His name is Jacob. Jacob was in a place and um, Jacob was not conscious of where he was. 
he was not conscious of where he was. I understand that he had a lot of problems. He just ran away from his brother. He stole his brother's blessing. Yeah, he did. And um, he ran away. And when he ran away, he thought the brother was chasing him and all of that. So he got to a place. He was not even conscious of where he was. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter number 28, verse 16 to 17. Go there. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not conscious of it. And I did not know it. Did you see that? Now, this was after the man woke up from the dream. Follow me now. He said that after he saw something else in the dream. God actually is in that place perpetually. I will explain what that means actually. Perpetually, continually, even till now. Follow me. Don't judge it yet. Even till now. But Jacob was not conscious of the spiritual environment he was in. He took a dream. And, uh, he took a dream for him to even get a bit of it. He could have enjoyed those activities right from the time where, at that moment. But he took a dream. Now, in verse 17, he tells you, And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? After the dream now. How awesome. You know, when I was reading my Bible, I've always thought it was God was. God was. It was, that was a place of encounter. That's what I've always called it. But when I was studying my Bible, that's why you have to go to read your Bible over and over again. You don't have Zoom things. You don't have Zoom things. You don't say a preacher said it, then it's, it, it is. You go to your scripture and read. When I read it again, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. God, he's in this place. He's. That, that place was a potter. A permanent potter. Listen to me. Let me say this. My father taught me that and he showed me some. They are angelic potters. They are gateways to heaven. They are doors to heaven. Like doors, gates. And they are scattered in places all over the world. There are not so many. Jacob walked into a particular spot like that and he didn't know. Angels were all around him, going up and coming down. He didn't see it, he didn't know, he was not sensitive. He had to sleep to see what was happening in the dream. You know, many times when you can't pick signals right now while you are awake, God say, Ah, this is my daughter again, eh? He has watched, she has watched Telemundo to the point that she has forgotten all the things of the spirit. Then God said, okay, let's bring something to his dream or to her dream. This one has chased, chased, chased the money. Then you now see something in your dream. Like, ah, I had the dream. I woke up. Listen, God has been trying to tell you that thing, that same thing, right there in your heart, in your ears. You're not just sensitive. Hallelujah. Then he woke up in verse, um, in verse 17. Look at that. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? There is none other than the house of this is none other than the house of God. It is the gate of heaven. The place where he was. It's called the gate of heaven. It was a portal where which angels go up and down. I know of such portal too, somewhere in Nikiti. Praise God. You cannot sleep there. You cannot be there over the night and not see angels. It's not possible. Glory to God. Why? Jacob was not sensitive about the potter. He was not, he was not conscious of where he was. He was in the front of the gate of heaven. He could have taken a trip. Glory to God. He could have taken a trip right there. But he was not conscious. He was not. He was not conscious of his environment. Because he, he did not, he could not pin down his thoughts his memories, feelings, sensation, and ends received from his environment. It was not many times you have had encounters with angels. You have had, you have come into portals. You have stepped into portals. You have even met men that are portals. You just ignore them and you just walk away. And you know what? To God, that is even dishonor. You didn't say anything. No. The fact that you could not recognize it because you expected you to recognize it. And lack of recognition is actually the first step to dishonor. Because there's a gift in front of you, you can't even see it. Hallelujah. It took a dream to help, to help Job. Many times you won't get a dream. Your consciousness does not just happen by default. It's not something that just happened to you. Uh, 
my it's just this is my consciousness no it doesn't just happen paul told us in philippians chapter number four he says young man you can create your own consciousness <laughs> glory to god i love the bible <laughs> i don't know if you do like i do i love the bible <laughs> type that say that right there i love the bible finally my brethren whatever things are true are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there is anything worthy of praise what did he say to you meditate on these things meditate on these things Paul told you to create your consciousness. He said, meditate on these things. That's the New King James Version. Another version said, brood on these things. Another version said, think on these things. Praise God. Did you see that? Paul is trying to tell you that, brother, brother, brother that's, that's just that you, you think your, your life is just, uh, your question is just romance, just the man to marry. Your life is more than that. It's just job. No, you like more than that. It's just um, you only think of the past, the pain, rape, what happened to you. It's more than that. You only think of abuse. It's more, it's more than that. You only think of lack. It's more than that. You can create your consciousness. He says, and he told you the things to think of. Are they of good report? Are they pure? Are they lovely? Are they just? You can wash off the garbage, the garbage of religion in your heart, from your heart. You can wash up the garbage of unbelief, of doubt, of ignorance, all the wrong knowledge you have acquired by acquiring new knowledge of God's word, by thinking on these things, by meditating on these things, by making them your predominant thoughts. He says to you, if you begin to do that, you know what you are going to do? You are going to create your own consciousness. You are going to create your own consciousness. Hallelujah. You are going to create your own consciousness. So he says, Paul says, you can choose what you think. When wrong thought comes to you, shh, just reply with a word. Now listen to me. You don't reply thought with thought. No. Because the devil has the capacity to put thoughts in your heart. He did for Eve. You get? He did that to Eve. So you don't reply thought with words. When thought comes around, they say, ah, this is what will happen to you and your pastor. Or this is what you will do at work tomorrow. This is what will happen to your business. You reply those thoughts with words. And that word must be the word you want. The outcome you want to see. And you reply with the word of God. When thoughts come and say, oh, you, you will never see angels in your life. You say, no, 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 I have come. <laughs> I am come to the normal company of angels. I see angels. And that's my experience. And they walk with me. Oh, you then, you will die young. Oh, oh, oh. With long life, it will satisfy me. I determine when I will go. Glory to God. Did you get that? You are replying thoughts with words. And as you reply those thoughts with words, and you say those words continually, they become, they become your memory because they become the events of your life. And when they become your memory, they become your feelings. And when they become your feelings, they become your sensations. The, 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 the things that makes you think. Like, I'm such a person that the word of God makes me think. There's nothing that makes me scream in my room or in my house like the word of God. I see something scream, I just start shouting, yeah, glory. I, it, it turns me on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you can create. Just focus on your thought realm. When you focus on your thought realm and make sure the things that are there are lovely, they are pure, they are worthy of praise. And there's a kind and it's a kind of knowledge that you want to experience. You know what? You are creating an activity that people will soon see. For me, I believe, um, I believe enjoying a life of effective activity of angels of constant activity of angels i believe it is worthy of praise so if paul told me to think on those things meditate on those that are worthy of praise i think that is worthy of praise and i'm going to think on that praise god listen to me carefully brother and sisters what you what you practice the, the way you live your life they usually become your predominant memory and thought and ends your consciousness. An example is found in the book of Romans, chapter number 8, verse 6. See what Paul is saying. He said, For those who live according to the flesh will what? Think about the things of the flesh. 
But those who live according to the Spirit will do the same thing about the things of the Spirit. So see, Paul is telling you that there's a way to determine what you think about. This is how you live. If you live according to the flesh and you live and your lifestyle is after the order of sin, perpetually you start thinking sin. You didn't get that. It ends up to become your it, it ends up becoming your experience. It becomes your consciousness. So if you want spirituals to be your consciousness and to exp, and, and to be your experience, you've got to live according to the spirit. You cannot engage the ministry of angels um, when your consciousness is just filled with carnality. It's filled with movies. It's filled with sin. It's filled with wrong talking. It fills with um, different kinds of things. No. There's nothing wrong with movies and all of that. But you can't be full with them or full of them and, um, and be full of the Spirit at the same time. It will hinder your work. So to create activities of angels or to create the consciousness of angels around you, and to manifest it in this environment of yours, you've got to create your consciousness with words. Your words will become your thoughts. Let me, let me give an example. Have you ever had somebody call you a terrible name? Let's say a slut or stupid. Or could just call you one name. When you get home, you just sit down. You are after work. You are trying to, you are trying to um, unwind and just change, remove your, your wig. And, uh, sorry, your hair. Is it your wig or your hair? Which one? You remove one to remove, wipe your, your makeup and um, all of that. And you just, you just drop that thing on your, on your dressing mirror. And, like, just remember what your boss said to you. And suddenly it becomes your thought. And you play with that thought for 30 minutes. Until one guy reminds you that you have not eaten. Oh, I've not eaten. And that thought you have created, that thought you just thought about, as will become memory. Because you have kept it in an archive in your mind. And to come back, we'll revisit this. We'll, mention, we'll really think, we'll really visit and, and really think about why that man has the right to call me a slot. You will tell me whether I have done this with somebody before. You will just start playing things in your head. So he tells you that words, he tells you that words create what? Feelings. Your words will create your feelings. Hallelujah. Words will create feelings. Praise God. So you can choose what you think. You can choose your consciousness. You can choose what you think about. And the best way to choose it is by speaking God's word. When you continually speak God's word, God's word will become your thought realm. Say, God's word has become my thought realm today because I have decided to speak God's word. Say that again. God's word will become my thought realm because I have decided to speak God's word. All right. Praise God. Now, listen to me. Um, the Bible was not given to you as just a book. I said that earlier. It's not a book to memorize. It's a book to use to create an experience. So I saw something in scriptures in the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 5 to 6. Look at what it says. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with with and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you. I will never leave thee, nor forsake you. Look at what he said. This is scriptures. This is the author of Hebrew quoting what was written in scriptures. Right? Now he now told you why that thing was said. He says, so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Glory to God. Did you see the use of scripture? He says the reason that text was written is so that you may boldly say it. It was not written for you to memorize. No. It was not written for you to feel good and smile about. No. It was written that so that you may boldly say it. Now that's a principle. That's a law all over scriptures. It's the same for all scriptures. For the scripture you want to do, it's the same. For the ones you want to teach, it's the same. It's the same. So how do you engage that for the ministry of angels? We're just talking about your consciousness. How do you engage that? You pick scriptures. All right. So you say Hebrews chapter number 1 verse 14. Therefore, angels are only servants. New King, uh, NIV version. 
Therefore, angels are only servants. Spirits sent to care for those who will any salvation. All right. So that's scripture. So now, so that you may boldly say, what will you say? Glory to God, I have angels as servants and they care for me so that you may boldly say. That text was written so that you may boldly say. You pick another. Um, Matthew chapter number 18 verse 10. Jesus speaking, he said about these little ones, do not look, at, look, do not look down on them, do not despise them. For they are, for I tell you that they are angels are in heaven, always in the presence of my heavenly father. All right, so you would declare. I, so that you may boldly say for this text, now becomes, I always have angels, even since I was a little child. They look down on the father's face, ready to take my orders. Glory to God. So that you may boldly say. Then you pick Psalm 91 verse, verse, verse 11. He said, I've, concerning you, I've given my angels charge over you to protect you in your ways, so that you don't dash your leg against the stone. So you declare and say, so that you may boldly say, angels has been given to me. Given, they've been given charge concerning me. They've been assigned to me so that I do not experience any accident. So that I do not dash my leg against a stone, my feet against a stone. Glory to God. So that you may boldly say, as you declare those words, you are using scripture the way you ought to use them. They are for your confession. They are for your homologia to say the same thing. It is so that you may boldly say, hallelujah. It is in that saying that thought realm develops. That thoughts, is, that thoughts are created. So that you may boldly say. So what was the last thing you said about angels? Ah, they are plenty or they can fly. They have wings. They can travel far. No. Oh Lord. Angels, your angels, where are they? Lord, send your angels to me. No. Nothing like that will happen. You are not doing scriptures. You are not doing scriptures. Your consciousness is wrong. So that you may boldly say. Hebrews chapter number 12 verse 22. What does it say? But we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the, to the new Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. So you say, glory to God, I am come to Zion. I am come to an innumerable company of angels. I've got company all around me. Glory to God. Angels are my outriders. They clear the road for me. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. So that you may boldly say, praise God. Hallelujah. When you let this word occupy every moment of your life, you know what you're doing? You are creating thoughts. You are creating thoughts. You are creating thoughts. The word of God becomes your thought. It becomes a, that, that's, that's God's original plan from the very beginning. The enemy just took over it. They took over it with the media. They took over it with movies. They took over it with your billboards, with everything you see. No, 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 no. But you got to create your own environment. The word of God needs to be your thought. When you're working on your laptop, what pops up? On the internet, nude pops up. Different kind of so many things, so advert pops up. You create your pop-up. And let the pop-up be the word of God. Hallelujah. Let this word occupy your thought. By that you create your own consciousness. And, and you will create your advantage. Praise God. The Christian man can create his own consciousness. And by this, he has advantage over everything. Everything around him. He would have advantage over everything around him if he can create his consciousness. Because listen to me, friend. You can't live above your consciousness. You can't. Maybe by company, by being in my company, you can experience something. It's my consciousness. When you move away, you return to your own level. Recently, I was talking to uh, one of my sons, uh, Pastor Thud. He was with me at a time where I had an activity of angels. And that was the first time you saw an angel flew away. And recently, we were talking again. I said, have you ever had an encounter with angels since that time? <laughs> he said, Papa, be sure. We are going to see him now. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, go see him. I like I just shake my eye like, oh, I just shook my eye like, okay. And this was someone that saw an angel physically. Physically. 
Why? That was my rem. It was not his. You need to create your consciousness. You need to work on it. Build it. This week, you are going to pick those cones. If you, if you want the activity of angels, you are going to get those verses about the activity of angels. Put them together. Build them up. Build them up. Build them up. And homologia them. Homologia them. Say it. Say it the way scripture have said it. It was written so that you may boldly say. Hallelujah. I see the activities of angels all around you. I see the activities of angels in your family. I see them in your workplace. I see them in your home. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now you are given. You are given to their activity. They are given to you. In the name of Jesus. You will say the word. You will do the word. You will create your own consciousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe this word blessed you today. I believe you are so, so blessed. I believe you are so, so blessed. Go over this message again. Do the word. And watch the activities of angels around you. I'm going to continue.